Hello everyone, it's Attackers Number 2 here, and for today, we have gotten ourselves another Nintendo discussion for today's video. And the topic we are about to discuss for today is something that has been like a big, partial, big, big topic for quite a while now. And I think I want to just talk, talk about my own opinions about this. So first of all, the Super Mario Bros. movie has officially made $1 billion worldwide during the last weekend. And it was incredible to see how this movie went from basically a worrying mess that would be kind of ruined, that would kind of ruin Mario reputation for quite a while to basically one of the highest grossing animated films of all time. Currently, it is about a number 11 or 10 at the highest grossing animated film currently, pretty much beats and frozen at almost one at the same price in, except Mario movie has gotten a lot more, you know, got a lot more recognizable, recognition, a lot of love and all that. And really, while there is a lot of discourse between that Mario or Sonic movie and all, with Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie pretty much getting around $400 million, I really love both of them either way. However, there is one thing that I was worried about, and given from the fact that how great this movie is, it did lead to one discussion that I've talked about before in this channel, and that, my friend, is the Smash Brothers Cinematic Universe. Now, this has been a discussion for a long time now, pretty much at around two 2019, maybe around 2017 or 16 and all, and really, when it comes to a Smash Bros. Cinematic Universe, there is a lot to say about this. So, I just kind of want to get out, get this out of the way and say these three, these simple words. We do not need a Smash Bros. Cinematic Universe at all. Why is that exactly? Why am I saying this right now to many fans that really want this sort of potential in Nintendo's big future and, and everything else? Well, that's why in this video, I just want to be discussing on why exactly we do not need a Smash Bros. Cinematic U Universe at all, and why it would definitely not be a good idea to pretty much make one at, maybe not right now, but maybe in the certain future, if there's ever any potential. So, first of all, why exactly is the Smash Bros. Cinematic Universe even mentioned to begin? with. Well, it kind of started with how video game movies recently have been getting quite a lot of love and care, when especially with how they recently been adapted. The, the 80s and 90s when it comes to video game adaptions were kind of strange at its time. There was also the 1993 Mario Brothers movie, there was also the release of two Mortal Kombat live action movies, I think there was also live action Street Fighter movies as well, with a few animated OVAs of Street Fighter and Fatal Fury and all, And but as time goes on, it seems that video game movies have gotten a lot more love in ter terms of adaption as the years go by. With movies like Final Fantasy 7 from Advent Children, then there was also Mortal Kombat that came out last year, on 2021, which is a new live action one. There was also a few Mortal Kombat animated films, and now recently, which I would consider the three most the three most notable ones in terms of video game movies that many stated to be a cinematic universe type of thing, is Mario movie, Sonic movie, being the two ones, and and also Detective Pikachu in 2019. These were the three most notable video game movies that got a lot of success. And yeah, while Detective Pikachu was okay, it definitely did a lot of great profit and money off from, from you know, Pokemon being a huge thing. So... This is pretty much what it started. And as I'm showing you right now, this actually came from a tweet during the, you know, during the whole situation with the Mario movie right now, during uh, last month. So you can kind of tell that there was a lot of things of people saying that there's a lot of potential for the Mario movie. However, seeing this right now, I really don't think that's even likely. First of all, Illumination is, people are saying that Illumination is really perfect for movies such as the Mario movie, which is understandable, along with things like Donkey Kong, Kirby, e, Star Fox, Zelda and, uh, Zelda and Metroid. Hold on. I've seen Illumination on this list, and yet people are expecting Illumination to make a Zelda and Metroid fi film. How is that even possible, to be exact? Now, first of all, I gotta ask you this. Do you really think L Illumination would pretty much spend their profits and basically scrapped every project away just to make a universe that many people have expected, but in reality just may not happen at all? And first of all, is that I know people think that Illumination is perfect for things given how well, visually well, the Mario movie was, but that's the thing, though. The thing about it, though, is that, well, I'm, okay, first of all, I'm not trying to hate on Illumination movies or anything else. I do like some of them, like Despicable Me and Horton Hears a Who and all. 
But here's the thing, though. Most of their movies are known for how very visually appealing they look. They are very great in terms of visuals, the designs, and everything else. They are known for making great animation. Their stories, however, is what a big problem is. Sometimes they are either okay or mid, while some are pretty much just adaptions from other books like The Grinch or, like I mentioned, Horton Hears a Who. And them pretty much making movies such as Zelda, which, you know, there's a lot of things to make, to make, to take a lot from Zelda games, and a Metroid game, um, and a Metroid movie, which, Metroid, keep in mind, is one, if not one of the most mature looking Nintendo games that they have ever made, and especially with Star Fox as well. Nintendo has once made an animated Star Fox video back in around when Star Fox Zero was a thing, and I don't really think Illumination would fit the style of both Metroid and Zelda overall. I can kind of see DreamWorks and Laika making a Zelda film, and maybe a live-action Metroid movie. I mean, I would personally love to see some sort of a live-action Metroid movie in the near future and all, but really, I can definitely see like you know, Laika or DreamWorks or just any other studios other than Illumination to work on a Zelda movie, because that would not work at all. Another thing to really mention of why the movie was so great is, like I said, their sto- is that, like I said, Illumination is known for how pretty bad their stories can be, but their animation is really, really great. The Mario movie was really successful as it is because of Nintendo's involvement. And not only that, there were some people, along with the directors of the movie, are also pretty much the same people that have experience with Mario movie, with the Mario games. And like, and hear me out, and let me say this again, experience. Zelda and Zelda and Metroid are, ge- are a bunch of franchises and have a lot of games that pretty much needs to take a lot of source material, and it's really hard to make an original Zelda film when there's so much Zelda lore into it. And while Metroid, I guess they can find their own take on making a live-action Metroid film, but even if so, that's just not likely at all. And I don't really see many think- people thinking that, you know, Illumination is fit for these other things. I can kind of see them making a Kirby movie, but then again, I mean, there was a Kirby right back at your anime back then, so I don't really know whether or not a Kirby movie would fit. I can see them fit in Illumination style, but whatever Nintendo and Hell Laboratory has in store for the Curbster in the future, then I feel like that's just on their own decision. Now, like I said, many are claiming this to be a cinematic universe because of how very successful each of these movies are and how very big of a potential they can be. Now, here's the thing. Cinematic universe is pretty much great in general. However, I don't honestly think it would it would be a really good idea given that one specific cinematic universe has been successful for the longest of times. Like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is pretty much what started the whole cinematic universe term and all such. Thing is, is that Kevin Feige, who is one of the producers of the whole MCU has been building this whole saga up for a while for a long time now ever since Iron Man ever since the first Iron Man movie in 2008 everything was planned script on what characters they're gonna build up and everything else and they pretty much have been building up to everything that came from what basically went from the simple Iron Man to going all the way into Endgame in general and really this is like I said it has been built up since 2008 and it's become one of the most financially most well critical and most successful unit terms of all time being the Infinity Saga. Can't say the same about the Multiverse Saga, however, given how very, very bad it is. So, yeah, and really, given that people are trying to copy off the cinematic universe aspects such as DC, the extended universe to be exact, then, yeah, there really is no reason to be a good cinematic universe when Marvel has pretty much been the king of all of that. There's not, there, there won't be another cinematic universe like Marvel ever again. And even though Marvel has been kind of going a little bit downhill in terms of the MCU, you can tell that it's still one of the biggest things that they have ever created. Plus, I mean, having a Smash Bros. cinematic humors might also require Masahiro Sakurai's involvement. Shigeru Miyamoto was involved with the Mario movie, which makes sense. With Sakurai, however, from what I've seen so far, he's been doing pretty well with his YouTube channel, and also has been in his semi-retirement form for quite a while now. And I can understand that. I mean, he's been making Smash Bros. since Brawl for like the for like over a decade, and I really feel like he deserves a whole break from this. So having Sakurai is coming out of his semi-retirement just 
to make an SCU is uh, is really nothing as special, and it would kind of just hurt his mental health of really much. So, Haben Sakurai is, you know, well, it, it would be interesting. I don't really think a Smash Cinematic Universe would even work without Sakurai's involvement at all. Another thing I really want to mention is that why exactly make a cinematic universe to be exact? Can't we, I mean, I can see why people would be excited for it, but at the same time, why can't I just, I can't, and I really want to ask this, why can't we go one simple day without having somebody saying this could lead to a cinematic universe? Why can't the movie just be a normal move, standalone movie? I can definitely see other projects that Nintendo could be working on, because I don't really think we would want to see any other move, cinematic universe at all. When there are other franchises that deserves at least some other adaption that isn't just movie format or any sort of medium whatsoever. For example, like Fire Emblem, Xenoblade Chronicles, Kid Icarus, Kirby, I mean, like, I mean, like I said, Kirby might get a movie, but it really depends on how they do it. Like, how come we don't have an anime, for, an anime show of the trilogy for Xenoblade Chronicles? I can, I don't see it be becoming a movie because you have any idea how large Xenoblade's story and lore is as a franchise. Along with Fire Emblem, there's a lot of potential with either a brand new Fire, Fire Emblem anime that is completely original, or is based off of one of the main games that has been recent. Kid Icarus, I can definitely see happen, and they've already made two animated shorts on Kid Icarus, so I don't really see the reason why they can't do that again, except making a full anime. Kirby, like I mentioned, I mean, heck, I would take an Ice Climbers animated short film over a, a Nintendo or Smash Bros. Cinematic Universe over whole uh, over this. I prefer this or Mr. Game & Watch one, just as long as it doesn't lead to any sort of crossover, then I would definitely be fine by that. Another thing to really mention is that, like I said, I feel like standalone movies could honestly be more sense. Or, in a way, these two words. Spin-off movies. Or, that's three words, but you get my point. Like, the Mario movie was pretty great and all, but some of my big issues was also the pacing. Donkey Kong and Luigi were one of the most underutilized characters in the entire movie, and I really expected some of them to be, you know, a little do a little bit more, given how pretty much big these characters are, to be exact. And I did hear that Donkey Kong is supposed to be planning to get a standalone spinoff film, pretty much taking place either after or before the events of the Mario movie, which would really be great, as we want to see more Donkey Kong love, given from how very dry the series has been recently. And like I said, Luigi was also a very underutilized character, and he was pretty much advertised a lot, because, I mean, this is called the Mario Bros, after all. Like, we didn't really get to see that much of the bros until, like, the final act, and really. And I really would love to see a Luigi's Mansion spin-off movie. That would definitely be incredible in terms of illumination. we pretty much already seen Charlie Day, the actor of Luigi, wanting a Luigi's Mansion movie, and I can agree with that. I would love to see that instead of just a cinematic universe. After after all, seeing these two being underutilized could lead to so much more potential. Another thing to mention is that there's already a planned sequel in the future for the Mario movie. Why exactly have a crossover universe when we can have another type of universe but just make a Mario movie like that is just on the same universe? Like, there's still other characters that has yet to be appearing in the future. Like, Bowser Jr., Wario, Waluigi, Daisy, Rosalina. Those are many, there are many, many Mario characters out there that pretty much has a lot of appearance in more in other medium other than video games to appear way more than just to be in a crossover movie after all now here's our here are some examples of movies that are or shows that are really successful even with or without the spin-offs well you can say with their spin-offs to be exact the Shrek movies are pretty great and while it is pretty much a really good series some characters were a little bit underutilized for example being Puss in Boots in general while he is cool and pretty much you know full of character we don't really get to really see you know enjoy that much moments with him aside from a few funny ones however his spin-off films being Puss in Boots from 2012 and last year's big success from DreamWorks, from DreamWorks being Puss in Boots The Last Wish, are one of the most well-made movies in terms of his character. Well, yeah, the first one was okay, but The Last Wish really gave his character a lot more charm, making, making Puss in Boots one of my favorite characters in the Shrek universe. And keep in mind, this is taken in the same universe, whether that was after or before the events of Shrek. You can tell how very successful Puss in Boots was, and it makes him, as a character in the Shrek series, way more likable than we thought. 
Then there was a show I watched last year, being Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad is a five-season show that is absolutely really amazing in terms of characters, moments, and especially, you know, its meme work, but also its plot as well. And Better Call Saul was a spin-off that has lasted for quite a while, and it did end last year from what I can recall, and I was wondering whether we could see more of Saul as a character, but I think that his comedic side is more of a facade or some sort of a disguise, and when I watched Better Call Saul, I genuinely could not believe what I saw, as this character is by far one of the most well-layered characters, well-written ones, and one of the most tragic and saddest ones to be exact, and you know, he's, I will say that that. Saul is a little bit more likable and really great than Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. I still like those two characters, don't worry. I just think that Saul really became more fleshed out as a character with his own spin-off show. Then there is the Toy Story trilogy, which was really great, and the star and Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, I hope anybody remembers this, is a really good spin-off, and it kind of just shows Star of Buzz Lightyear as a character, along with introducing a few more characters. And yeah, while the show is a little bit underrated, it is a shame that we didn't really get to see much mention of Disney mentioning this at all. That's my point. Movies don't, doesn't have to be any sort of cinematic universe. And another thing I have to mention is that is Smash Brothers really known for its story? The only time they ever really gotten a, you know, any sort of story is that we know that Smash Brothers and the Smash characters are just toys. The Smash 64 intro pretty much made it clear that the characters in Smash Brothers are simply just toys and the kids are just playing with them making them fight each other. That's just the imagination of a child, like you know, what I, like everyone else did as a, you know, in their childhood. Pretty much that's just the only type of story. And before you say that Subspace Emissary exists, I mean, yeah, I love the story, but is it really telling me anything else? All that matters to me is that I get to see my favorite characters interacting with each other and making funny moments. Plus, it's very convoluted to even mention of what the Smash Cinematic, of what the Subspace Emma story story is even about, what the motives are really, and what the world is really like, or how these characters even meet to begin with. My point is, is that Smash Brothers is not really known for its story. I mean, what would a Smash Brothers movie even be when it ever gets to its point? Like, it's mostly just fighting. I mean, it could be well choreographic fights. I mean, that could be something. But really, there's no really story. There's really no story or any point to making a Smash Brothers movie if there's no plot. But. Yeah, I hope you all at least enjoy my takes on what I feel about the Smash Bros. Cinematic Universe or the Nintendo Cinematic Universe as other, other claims, claims it to be. Really, I don't see the point to it. I get that people are very optimistic about it, but be real. Do you really expect them to pretty much do that? Especially from the fact that Nintendo has other personal projects they would do, they would do. I'm a bit of an optim, but as Silver says in Sonic Forces, I'm, a, I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. I don't think a cinematic universe would even work. Like I said, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is basically the one and only cinematic universe that truly matters in terms of what they do in terms of plot and story. Plus, not only that, if they ever go to make a Smash Cinematic Universe, I'm pretty sure they're going to make 8 to 10 Fire Moon movies just to make sure the fans understand the plot of the series. I don't think, for, I think for those who really want this, you're really going to have to sit through that much, ten, you know, you're, you're really going to have to sit through 10 Fire, Mo Fire Emblem movies just to do this. Oh, and I guess a Xenoblade anime if you want to, just to understand the whole plot. Oh, ho I hope you at least enjoy that. But let me know your thoughts and opinions down below about this. What do you all think of the potential of a Smash Bros. Cinematic Universe? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? Or do you really think it's just nothing more, more than a waste of, the, of time? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below about this and so with that. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more videos, follow my Twitter, and I'll see you guys next time. And remember this, once a legend, always a legend.